deploying Blazor is really easy. But instead of me just showing a few magic steps, we're breaking down the deployment process and understanding each piece well. That way, you're prepared to use each step in the real world with a real project. In the last video, we create a Blazor server project and display the connections tree. We set up a GitHub repository and we configure Azure Web App that we want to deploy to. Now in this video, we're going to set up the GitHub action to deploy our site automatically when we commit code to the repository. Now, before we jump in, I want to share a few things with you. First, if you're interested in improving your C-sharp skills, be sure to subscribe to this channel. With over 500 C-sharp videos and counting, it's the perfect place to learn and grow your skill. Second, if you're looking for free C-sharp resources, head over to imtimcorey.com and check out the resources tab. You'll find a podcast, C-sharp products page, and much more there. And third, if you're ready for a deeper dive into a specific C-sharp topic, I have a variety of courses that can help. Not only will you receive a world-class education, but you'll also help fund my free content so that everyone can have a great education in C-sharp, not just those who can afford it. So let's jump right in by going back to our Azure portal. And in Azure, we have our web app. I'm right on the web app right here, and we're going to choose the deployment center here on the left. And this is where you would find, remember I said when we created the Azure Web App, we could have created the GitHub Action right in line right then. And if you did that, you would find that GitHub Action connection right here. But because we don't have a GitHub Action yet, we're going to create one now. So wait for this to load for a minute, and then we're gonna choose our source code location. So GitHub, Bitbucket, Local Git, or Azure Repo are our three CICD normal options. We can also do a manual push from an external Git site, but we're gonna choose GitHub. And I'm already logged in as myself. You could change accounts or log in yourself with your own GitHub credentials. I'm gonna choose a Tim Corey organization. And because of that, I've got a bunch here, but Blazor Deploy is near the top. And then for branches, I only have one branch, but if you had multiple, you could choose which branch is the one that is your uh, production build. So which one is the one you want to get published normally? Oh, or maybe you say, you know what? This is deploying typically to the dev build. And so we're going to deploy main, but it's going to be our dev server. And we'll do something different for our, our push to real production. I encourage you though, your, your automation systems need to be the same or should be the same for deploying to dev as they are to production, because that is how you test to make sure your deployment is working correctly. Okay, so we're gonna choose main and it's saying, hey, runtime is .NET and the version is .NET Core 7.0. And we could preview this file if we do. Notice this is gonna create for us a YAML file. Notice it says, the file path is going to be .github slash workflow slash main underscore blazer under dash deploy dash app dot yml. So this is a YAML file. If you've never dealt with YAML files before, the key thing to note is that the spacing is critically important. This is how it determines the level of parent-child versus sibling. So the on and jobs are siblings because of the fact that the same indent level, whereas push and workflow dispatch are direct children of on, whereas branches is a grandchild of on and is a child of push. So just note that's how that works. What it's going to do is it's going to create a job that will deploy to Azure safely and securely when we push to the main branch on GitHub. So we can do a whole nother video. We will do a whole nother video on GitHub Actions at some point, um, but this is going to give us the GitHub Actions script that we need to automatically deploy to our server. So we're gonna hit save on this. What is it gonna do, just so we're clear, is this is going to come over to our GitHub repository and create a new commit. Notice if we hit refresh here, just make sure we have the latest version. We have two commits total. Once I hit save here, and this processes, we'll have three commits. So we're going to hit save. We're going to let it do its thing. This is, again, Azure. And you're saying, well, wait, how does Azure have rights to GitHub? 
Remember, we had to log in and use our credentials in order to connect to our GitHub. It's using those credentials to connect, to create a, a commit, and then to have GitHub run that action. So if we hit refresh here, we've got a build in progress. If we come back over here and hit refresh. Notice we have three commits now. We have a new folder and we have this right now that's working. If we go to actions, we can see we have a working job in progress. So this job is doing a build and deploy. So it's done the build and now it's deploying to production. Notice the steps here, click into it. We could see exactly what's going on. It downloaded the artifacts in the build and now it's deploying to Azure. So if we go back to our workflows and look, there's our YAML file. And if we open that up, we can see what all it's doing. So this is doing our, our build and deploy based upon when we push to the main branch. That's what it's doing. And based upon that, it is running Ubuntu latest. It's doing a, a checkout and then it's doing a, it sets up .NET Core. It runs a, a build and it runs a publish and then it uploads the artifacts so that the published stuff, it takes that stuff and uploads that. And then it does the deploy step, which is to open up our environment and then it's gonna download the artifacts and then it's going to deploy to Azure the slot called production. Here's the published profile, which is a secret. Um, that way it's not shared in our, our repository. It's not stored there. It's actually stored uh, externally to our source code so that we can keep it secret, but deploys our, our package, our, the, the built source site. So we go back, oops, go over to our actions. It's done now. Let's come back over to our, we refresh this and say, yes, it's successful. It's active. Go back over to overview and load up our page and we hit refresh and there we go. Hello, YouTube. This is connection string is from appsettings.json. We're gonna change that in the next video, but our counter does work. We are fetch data works. So um, we now have a published Blazor site, but we're not done yet because how do we know when it gets deployed? Well, if we go back over here to our actions and look, our actions are complete. We have two workflows have been run, they're complete. If we come back over here, our source code, let's make some changes. So we can say, you know what? <clears throat> let's create another paragraph. And we're gonna say here, um, this is our sample site that we deployed. Wow. Using GitHub actions. Okay, I'm gonna save that. I'm not gonna load this page locally. I'm just gonna save it and commit it. So we're gonna say um, fixed homepage. And we're going to commit all and sync. Now, if we come back over here to actually this one um, and we wait for it for a minute, once our push is done, it automatically said, hey, We've got a new commit that's now queued because the fact that we made a push. So um, because we made a push, actually what I did is I had to do a merge commit <laughs> to automatically without even me telling, telling it to, uh, because of the fact that I forgot to pull down changes first. So it pulled down the changes and, and then uh, merged them and pushed them back up with a, another commit. Um, my bad for not pulling those first, but it's now doing that build automatically. Now using the free build resources from GitHub, there is a limit on how many build resources you get per month, but it's pretty high. And so for most products, it shouldn't be a problem until you get to the point of being in production or being a larger team where you need more resources. And in that case, you should probably pay for it. But now if we hit refresh on our site, this is our sample site we deployed using GitHub Actions, and that's on our deployed website. So, and again, by the time you watch this video, this site will probably be gone. So don't look for this URL. I'm just doing this as a demo site and I'm gonna delete it. 
But um, but now we've got this is being published automatically. So every time we make a change, we now have GitHub Actions automatically pushing these changes out to our site. So next up we're going to do is we're going to address this connection string. So that's the next video where we're going to say, hey, you know what? We're deploying automatically to Azure, but that's we're going to pretend like this is our production site. And if it's a production site, we don't want it to be pulling our our um, connection string from a development uh, site or from app settings in general, because that's not a safe place to store our connection string, especially not for production. So we're going to safely and securely store our connection string for this site without modifying any source code. All right, so that's the next video. But until then, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.